Okay, so Moog posted a really good video online called Multiple Voices. I thought it was an excellent video, a really sort of showcase. Um, if you if you really think about it, what you can get out of um, the Mother 32 um, and its and its patch bay. Um, now, if you're not familiar with um, modular synthesis, this is a semi-modular synthesizer, the Moog Mother 32. Um, you can also get uh, another semi-modular uh, drum uh, machine called the DFAM, um, which a lot of people will be familiar with if they're familiar with uh, the Mother 32. So there's a lot of videos online with people who've really uh, found some really good patches. Um, there's a patch, uh, different patches in the manual, um, which I think are great. I've, I've tried a lot of them. Um, one of the first things you want to do if you if you have a Moog Mother 32 is um, is really consult the manual. Um, uh, maybe start with videos online. There's some great courses um, online also. Um, a lot of free stuff available, but there are some where you can pay uh, say twenty pounds um, and find like a, a good course that's a bit more a bit comprehensive. Um, to say you sort of searching if you really want to get going quite quickly. A lot of the stuff um, that you find on the courses um, you can probably pick up from the manual. Um, but obviously, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't really want to look at page and page of a manual, um, or it's it's difficult for you to maybe understand some of the language in the manual, then the courses can really help. Um, I've been doing modular synthesis now for maybe maybe six months. Um, I really got into it quite quickly. Um, I think maybe uh, my work. Um, working from a technical background maybe helps for me. I don't mind reading manuals. I'll read sort of a manual back to front and really try and understand all the different concepts, um, all the different languages. is quite cool uh, when you're talking about modular synthesis um, and sort of understanding sound design. It's really you know if if you you know, when you get into it, it's, it's really a lot there, there's a lot of in-depth things. Uh, everyone knows sound, everyone knows music, um, sort of understanding how sound is designed and synthesized. You can sound, you can sound design things from, you know, uh, typical sort of uh, noises, but you can also sound design noises that just occur in the environment. Um, you know, like a wave, um, that's basically like a noise, um, like a white noise. Um, the Moog has a white noise oscillator uh, within it. Um, all the different types of things you can synthesize, say string instruments, you can synthesize uh, bells. Um, there's, there's so much stuff you can synthesize um, just from um, using like a, a synthesizer like the number 32. Um, or other synthesizers um, and then the other main concept is that you can the audio is like the same as control you can use the audio signals as, as a voltage to control something else and modulate um, this this language might sound alien to a few people but when you get into synthesis you sort of uh, it sort of starts to become second nature it's quite it's not too hard to pick up um, but don't be daunted because, like I say, I've only been going at it six months, um, and you know I've already started to get to grips with it. Um, so Moo posted a video online called Multiple Voices. Um, I thought it was a great patch. Uh, really sort of got me thinking about uh, what I could do with the Model Thirty Two um, using sort of control voltages, thinking outside the box, thinking about different ways in which you can use control voltage to alter the, the mixer, the two mixers, in order to give you, say, two sounds, whereas previously you might have to think of it as singular, is you've got one VCR, there's only one VCR on the Mother 32. You'll see that there's videos online saying, well, how many of the oscillators? And then when I started thinking about that, and I looked on the videos online with the other oscillators, you think, yeah, that's, that's cool, but some of the oscillators, for instance, when using the LFOs, the oscillator doesn't track brilliantly. Uh, the filter's got quite a nice sine wave uh, as an oscillator, which does track quite well. 
um, so you can use that. Um, but so when I thought he's used people with like two or three of these things. Um, and that's great, but let's say if you were starting out, it was five hundred pounds. Yeah, you can bring, get it four hundred pound online, the eBay. Um, you know, quite sad to see a lot of people are putting these on eBay. Um, hopefully, to upgrade to, um, you know, maybe something bigger, or it doesn't quite fit with their design. But I think a lot of people maybe have bought this thing because it looks cool. You know, they think great. But they haven't really sort of got to grips with it, um, or understood it, or because if you're just playing this naively, you might just make a few sounds. You think, yeah, that's okay. It's not great. It's okay. Um, but it's really trying to understand where the best sounds are out of this thing um, that really gets you into modular synthesis um, and synthesis in general, sound design, um, and all the rest um, of it. And uh, but I looked at the video um, and I originally had this just this synth on its own. Um, I kind of thought I really need uh, additional synths because although the video that showed multiple voices was really good, um, I found it hard to say control the the kick sound and the snare sound. Um, and say with the snare, you get this high pitch note with it um, that. It's cool um, if that's what you want, but if you don't want that, it's hard to sort of get rid of that, and that's um, because um, basically you're using sort of the kick and the the LFO is the kick and the noise oscillator in the VC mix, and you're using to to sort of move that. You're you're using the what am I using to move that VC control? So I'm using the keyboard to move that. So in the keyboard voltage, so when you're using the keyboard, higher notes are going to give it um, sort of a higher voltage, lower notes are going to give it a lower voltage. Um, so um, when you're programming the bass line that's in the video, if you're using sort of higher notes, that's going to alter the sound um, of, your, of your snare and your, maybe your kick as well because it's altering this mix. Um, because he's basically using the keyboard to, to give you those sounds. Um, the other thing is um, that your kick. Um, it just me okay, so. So I'm sort of. That's the snare sound you get, is you're using the high octave. Okay, you're getting the accent, which is going to move that, um, sorry, move the, so you're getting a bit of that, but because you've got to keep your mix knob here, you're getting a bit of that high pitch sound as well, you're not getting the full. Um, the other thing is the snares, it's just like a noise snare, um, there's no sort of pitch with that, okay, so you're getting a pitch there, but maybe not the pitch you want with the snare, so, that's a bit of an issue. Um, the um, okay, and you're tying up a lot of things. You're tying up the assign. You're tying up the LFO within this patch. If I use the okay, so I'll show you the bass kick sound that you get. So you get you can control the pitch of that. Sorry. Okay, so you can sort of control the pitch of the, the kick if you stay within this this range on the LFO, sort of that um, sort of like 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock if it was a clock face. You sort of control that, that's pretty cool and the LFO kick does sound good on the number 32, um, but again, the snare, you sort of get this high pitch sound, which you do get when you, even when you apply the accent to move the mix up, you still sort of get it there. The only way to get rid of it is to move it all the way, but the accent doesn't seem to shift it um, enough to get that. Maybe there's another way of patching it 
where you can get uh, better, obviously maybe with an Excel unit, but if you're just trying to, if you've only got one of these, and um, that's what I'm sort of gearing the video towards. Um, okay, so, so that's the original patch. So I've got it loaded in here so we can listen to it. Um, so let's listen to it for a minute. It sounds pretty cool, right? You know, this is exactly the sequence that they use on the video. It sounds pretty cool. But you can hear the high pitched note with the snare. If you slow it down, you can sort of hear it a lot easier. You can hear it there on step five. See that high pitched note? Now, if you move the mix up a bit more to try and get rid of it, you start just bringing the noise into the other sounds, which you don't want. So that's not really an option. You can, in fact, uh, tune the lower kick without affecting much of the patch. You can sort of give it a sort of a higher pitch by just affecting the LFO right. The other issue, um, as I was talking about, um, is that when you go to the high notes, it sort of lifts the snare into a different pitch as well. The kick doesn't sound too bad, so if we go to sort of where you move in, changes it when it goes up in pitch. So that's another issue. Um, now, not with this sequence, but if you were using sort of much higher, maybe higher notes, it's still going to affect it. So, so basically, long and short of it is, I wanted to come up with a patch idea um, where you could take all the elements of the multi-voicing of the Mother 32, but have a controllable kick with pitch change and also have maybe a range of snare sounds. Um, and also I didn't want to take up too many too many things on the Apache bow, like I wanted to keep the LFO free and try and keep the assign free. I don't know if I'm going to be able to achieve it without keeping the assign free. Um, but but if, if, if you had the LFO free, you you know, that's all already helping um, and being able to control the pitch of the bass drum, although you can, you can kind of control it on this patch and it is good and it sounds good. I really like the uh, the filter kick, uh, the high resin sort of filter kick um, on the 32, which I'll show, which I'll start the patch off with. I'll show that. Um, I really like a kick, so I want to use that kick within this patch. Um, and also, yeah, like I wanted a range of snare sounds. So what I'll do is I'll set up the the patch, which is an independent patch uh, from basically reading the manual, watching videos online, really getting into this thing. This is where I came up with this patch, so hopefully it's all good and it's really going to help you guys sort of get into this because this thing is cool. This is a cool piece of kit. It's going to take up a lot of your time, but if you're willing to put the hours in, it's really rewarding. Um, it's it's one of those things. You know, your rack can be expensive, but this thing produced by Mood, which is probably one of the best manufacturers of synthesizers. If you look at synthesizers, you look you maybe start with looking at Moog, one of the original manufacturers. So I've got no aff affiliations to anyone. Obviously this is completely independent. Um, so totally it's cool anyway. So I'll check you out in a bit where I'm gonna set up the patch.